Um, but you've also been involved with Project Serum, a decentralized exchange. Can you talk a little bit about that and how that works? And um, you know, and maybe to slowly ease into the regulatory conversation, um, any sort of regulatory concerns you have around that? Yeah. So really, the genesis for that was, you know, we started looking at DeFi a year ago. Well, I guess a year and a half ago now. Um, and what became clear really quickly was that, first of all, there were some really cool things going on in DeFi. Um, and I think just to illustrate part of that, if you have a DeFi protocol, right, which which basically it's a company or a program or, you know, some protocol, some sort of system, which is built entirely into a blockchain, it's all transparent. It's 100% transparent. It's 100% predictable. What will happen given how people interface with it? And that means that if a third party comes and wants to integrate that protocol, they can. And you can get potentially this sort of exponential explosion of creativity and innovation because all of these different parts can be composable into each other. If you build a borrow lending protocol, then any other protocol on that blockchain can integrate it natively in, which just doesn't work in centralized finance in the, you know, in the same way. Um, and so it was really cool. There's a ton of hype around it. Um, and it also absolutely sucked to use. Like it was unbelievably bad. Um, and for those who, I think for those who haven't used DeFi and, and a lot of those who have, it's worth just running side by side a DeFi protocol and a centralized one, just reminding yourself of how painful it sometimes is. Um, and the reason is it was taking five minutes to finalize a transaction because the blockchain was completely overwhelmed. It cost $50 to click a button because you had to outbid everyone else trying to get their transactions in. Um, and what became clear really quickly was that scaling, the sort of problem of scaling a blockchain wasn't one of the 17 constraints on a blockchain. It was the single blocker to mass adoption. You cannot have a billion people using a chain that has 10 transactions per second. It just doesn't work. Like there's no two ways around it. That math doesn't work. And in order to take these programs and scale them to masses um, or even scale them to a single large enterprise, you needed to get into tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of transactions per second. Just take your favorite big enterprise, right? Whether it's a protocol, a company, a, a messaging protocol, whatever. It's going to have a million transactions a second. That's sort of like what it means to have a billion users. Um, and you needed a blockchain that could keep up with that. So we just sort of had phone calls with a lot of blockchains. Um, and I don't know, our call with Salon was very different than our calls with other blockchains. Like sort of, you know, one of the first things that, that Anatoly said was like, hey, you know, we've been thinking about like how many transactions do we need to do? things like we want to get wherever we need to get and like here's where we are now and here's a place you can go test it out and and and, and so anyway you know what we've um i think gotten really excited about is a lot of the applications that are being built on solana um and i i think it's it's one of the few places in DeFi right now where you can see it scaling to a billion users and it's not there right now um it probably has another factor of what 50 to go or something um, but that's a lot better than a factor of 50,000, um, you know, and, and, and like Tully said, one of the founding sort of principles of Solana is that it gets better over time, that it gets better with Moore's law, that it, it has an ambition to be able to service billions of users with millions of transactions per second. Um, and, and we just see that sort of the holy grail of what DeFi could become. And soon we've helped, um, you know, people build out. Uh, Dex is on the Solana blockchain, you know, Serum being one of them. Um, you know, we've, I don't know, I've sort of invested in a number of projects on the Solana blockchain in the Serum ecosystem. Uh, we've worked a lot with Jeremy, um, who, uh, you know, Circle has uh, added Solana support for USDC, it's stablecoin, which now all of a sudden you have sort of a massively scalable, stable object that can act as a pricing reference and pricing currency for transactions happening and for payments happening on Solana. And again, you go to a payment company and, and you're like, hey, can you try to integrate crypto? And they're like, great, we have 17,000 payments per second in this subclass that we'd like to test out on your network. How does that sound? And your, your answer would be like, yeah, we can make that work rather than like, can you try 17 without the thousand? Um, and that's really where it all came from. It, 
nothing is there yet. No DeFi protocols are at the level where, you know, centralized protocols have to be quaking in their boots because they're going to be overtaken tomorrow. But that's not the goal. The goal is moving, making progress, and building the fundamentals and this, the infrastructure of something that could get there, that could get to a point where real large systems decide that it is the correct decision for their business to build on a blockchain. And I think optimistically, we're, you know, a year or two away from from getting real adoption there, if the industry kind of builds its products right, plays its cards right. Um, and I'm really excited about sort of that progress.